Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 11. Paul wrote and said, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And listen to what he said in that 13th verse. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Amen. What a great word that is right there, is it not? Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we humbly come to the throne of grace tonight, Lord, we so thankful for everyone that's here tonight. God, we honor you. We praise you, Lord God, for the uh, praise reports, Lord, and for the needs that's been met here this week and just in the last several days. Father, we thank you, Lord God, Lord, know that you answer prayers. And Father, the needs that are here that's presented, those uh, unspoken requests, Father, we're even believing you for them tonight, God, that you're just going to continue to work and to move in people's lives. Father, we ask you for that precious anointing of your Holy Ghost to be upon this vessel tonight. And God, Lord, let your word touch our hearts. Father, give us ears to hear and a mind to understand and a heart to receive what you have for us tonight, we ask it in the precious, holy, and righteous name of Jesus and the church said amen. amen. You may be seated tonight. What a tremendous statement Paul said of faith there in that 13th verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Say that with me. I can do all things. Let's do it one more time so we'll kind of get together. I can do all things. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's my thought tonight. Through Christ, I can. Amen. I said through Christ, I can. Praise the Lord. I was thinking about this earlier this week, and I had a couple of unexpected days off. not going to go into it, but uh, it doesn't no big deal. But uh, I was sitting there at the house, and I began to think that, Sometimes, and probably most of us here tonight, if not all of us, have seen a time in our lives when we would go through things and have gone through those things where we we're thinking, Lord, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can handle this. I don't know, God, if my faith is going to carry me through unto where you're trying to lead me to. Anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? Amen. We probably think, Lord, I can't. But God's saying, you can. Yeah. Amen. You know, sometimes we look at the circumstances through our eyes and through our understanding. We look at the circumstances and try to figure it out with our intelligence and things. And sometimes when we do that, we think we can't. Or it can't be done. But when we begin to trust in God, and we begin to look to the Lord and begin to say, okay, God, I can't, but I know that I can through you. Yes. Amen. God can do that, can he not? Amen. Amen. I'm glad tonight to know that God don't work on my abilities. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that God don't work on your abilities. If God worked on our abilities, we probably wouldn't, he probably would not get a lot done. Amen. Amen. We look today, and I begin to think about this, that people today in the Christian walk to, to most, or to, let me say this, to a lot of people, the, the Christian life is getting up on Sunday morning, coming to church, going back home, coming on Wednesday night, going back home, and just that's their Christian life. They don't know how to live a Christian life. Many people love the Lord with all of their heart and haven't learned, though, how to live from day to day. Amen. And what I'm saying that uh, there is that my, a lot of Christians either are extremely high and they're on top of the mountain and the, they're having the best day of their life or they're extremely low in their lowest valley. But Paul was teaching us that whatever state I'm in, in other words, what he's saying, wherever I'm at in life, whatever this day presents to me, whatever goes on in this life, whatever circumstances I'm having to deal with, I've learned to be content. Amen. Amen. Paul said, I've learned that, that whatever state that I'm in, I am therewith to be content. It was one of those, what was one of the lessons 
that Paul was referring to that he had learned, he learned to be content. Yeah. Now let me say this. Catch that word learn there. Yeah. Because we have to learn God, don't we? Yeah. Amen. I said we have to learn who God is yeah. and how he works. I've been at this a long time. Amen. But you know what? I've learned a few things along the way. At least I hope I have with serving him and preaching his word. I don't know everything about God. I'm not going to stand up here and pretend you I do. But I've had to learn how God operates in my life. Yes. Amen. Amen. I've had to learn how God operates in my life. Paul said he learned to be content. What was he, uh, what, what was he talking about? To be content under all circumstances. He said there in that verse, he said, how to be abased or how to abound in all places. He learned wherever he was at. Paul, whether he was uh, 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 preaching the gospel uh, uh, to, uh, to hundreds of people and maybe even thousands, he learned. But if he was in a prison cell with just him and one other person, Silas, he knew how to live for God. Yeah. Amen. We know how to live for God when things are going good. Yeah. Come on, church, help me out tonight. We know how to live good when the reports from the doctors are good. We know how to live good when the financials, uh, finances of our are, are in our lives are good. We know how to live that way. But it's when we go through things and we struggle and when our faith is being tested that we have to learn that wherever we're at in God, as long as we're in God, let's be content with Him. Hallelujah. I don't know if you can feel it, but I'm beginning to feel this thing. Amen. He said, in all things, he said, I know how to be full. But he said, at the same time, I know how to be hungry. I know how to suffer need and that nothing is impossible through Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus said this in Mark's gospel, 9 and 23. Jesus said unto them, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Amen. Amen. So what Paul was saying here is, whatever my circumstances, I will live in them and I will not die in them. Yeah, Do you catch me? Right. Amen. I'll live in them. Amen. I'll be content. Yes. I may not like them, but I'll be content. I may not like what my children's doing, but I'm going to be content with it yes. until God changes it. I don't know what's going to happen in this situation, but I'm going to be content with it. Whatever God wants, I'm going to be content with it. Amen. 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 He said, I'm going to live in it, and I'm not going to die. The thing that we got a problem with today in a lot of Christians' lives is they let the circumstances kill them. I'm not talking physically and things, but I'm talking about spiritually. Amen. They live defeated. They walk around defeated. They're living, amen, in a death row, if you will. Amen. Now, let's go get to preaching here in a little bit. Hang with me. Amen. But we die spiritually sometimes if we're not careful. What did the devil say? Or what did Jesus say? Rather, he said, I came. Amen. The enemy cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, though, but I've come that you might have life. Amen. He didn't say that we wouldn't suffer. As a matter of fact, he said if we was righteous, that we would suffer. But I refuse to die in my circumstances when things don't go exactly the way I want them to go. Amen. 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 So we as Christians, we should never distrust God's goodness and never question his power. God is able, according to 2 Corinthians 9 and 8, God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. I like that. He said that God's grace can abound to us. How? That in all things, amen, in all the ways that we walk through this life, we will have sufficiency of God to do what God has given us to do. In other words, to live for Him. If you're struggling, God's got uh, grace. If we're walking through the valleys of the shadow of death, God's grace is sufficient to get us through that. Is it not? Amen. God is able to make that grace abound unto us. Amen. That person who puts his trust, their trust, uh, who places their trust in God will be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. Amen. That's what the Bible tells us. That we will be perfect 
and entire perfect is not perfect in what you think, but complete. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Complete. We'll be perfect. We'll be complete. Entire, lacking nothing. I don't like anything tonight. Amen. God saved me, and I'm on my way to heaven. Oh, I mean, we've got needs and stuff, but I under, but understand what he's saying. When we, we don't like anything as far as that relationship with God. We should want more. We should want to get closer to the Lord and all of that. But we are complete in Christ Jesus. And 2 Corinthians 3 and 5, talking about sufficiency and sufficient. Paul wrote, not that we are sufficient of ourselves, to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Amen. Amen. Our sufficiency is of God. Now think about this. The Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit of God dwells within the believer. Does it not? Yes. Amen. Listen to what Jesus said in 14, John 14, 17. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. I'm talking about through Christ I can. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So he will not only dwell with us, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, but he will dwell in us. And that gives us the ability to do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Amen. Amen. How many believes tonight that God's all powerful? Amen. How many believes he's got the ultimate power? Yeah. Amen. How many believes that through him we are more than conquerors? Yeah. How many believes tonight that we can do all things through Christ yeah. who strengtheneth yeah. us? Yeah. Hallelujah. So the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that dwells in us is, if you will, a secret strength and inspiration. In other words, he gives us that new life. Our sufficiency is of God. The Bible tells us in Psalms 104 and verse 16, listen to this, and we're going to bring a point out here, but the Bible says, Psalms 104 and 16, the trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted. Point being here tonight, I want you to pay particular attention to the Bible said, the trees of the Lord are full of sap, cedars of Lebanon done a little bit of research on them this week and the cedars of Lebanon were trees of spectacular beauty they were symbolized these trees symbolized growth and strength the cedar in scripture represents splendor it was of great size and of great statue the cedar, even would, would uh, even in the winter time, would remain green. You ever drive down the road in the middle of winter, look over and see the cedars? All the other trees are dead and all the other leaves have fallen off, but the cedar is still green. Amen. Bear with me. Hang in there. Hallelujah. When most other things are dying or are dead, the, the cedar is still alive. The cedar has a certain fragrance about it. Amen. I know there's been times, Jack and I, now we put up a, 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 a artificial tree every year, Christmas tree, but we'll go out and we, we love the smell of cedar. So we'll go out and we'll get us some little bitty branches, go somewhere where we can find cedar tree and get us some branches and cut them down and bring them home and place them throughout the house. Amen. So, we see, we got the best of both worlds. Yes. Amen. We don't have to clean up all the little prickly things off of a real tree. Yes. Amen. But we still get the smell of the cedar tree. Yes. It puts off a great fragrance, does it not? Yes. Amen. Yes. The tree was impressive in the scripture to look at. <coughs> Even Ezekiel said this in chapter 31, verse 8. Listen, the cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his bows, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches. Nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto his beauty. Talking about the cedar tree. Amen. I've got a point. Just bear with me here. Amen. Even though the cedar tree, though, was a magnificent sight to look at, and it was of great statue and great height, it was not that it lived by itself and a trusted of its own self, but the Bible teaches us that it was the waters 
that God had supplied to them that made them great like they are. Amen. So we see that the sap of the, the Lord, the trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon. There's a great abundance. Amen. The cedar was admired for its strength. The greatness of its height and the long branches are sang of its strength. The storms even can beat upon it, but it withstands the fiercest of winds and rains. Then the scripture they were even considered, the cedar tree was, to be a great building material. These trees owe their existence to God because, as we read there in Psalms 104, 16, God had planted them. My thought is to you that uh, we are like that cedar tree. Amen. We ought to be strong in the Lord. Amen. We ought to stand mighty when the, even the things around us begin to decay and fall away. Amen. Talking about the world and the sinful acts of the world. Amen. The Bible said the trees of the Lord are full of sap. There is a great abundance in their supply of all their needs. They are almost always green. Sap in the tree is an unseen resin. That's the, that substance that brought life all throughout the tree. These trees, again, were great in size and in stature. And it may seem to be impossible for that sap to reach to the top. But it would reach to the top of that tree. Amen. Amen. And my thought is that the Spirit of God is dwelling within us. We ought to allow that Holy Ghost and power of God to saturate us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Amen. I know that we go through things and we struggle and we have battles and things like that. But Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. And my thought when I brought that thought out there about the sap and the trees of the cedars of Lebanon, God had planted them. Can I tell you that God has planted us and planted you right where you're at and he's going to make sure where you're at that you've got the ample supply for all of your needs that sap would bring all throughout that tree and the limbs and the things of it all the way to the top it would bring the nourishment and the nutrients that that tree needed in order to live I'm glad tonight amen that I can trust in a God that can touch me in whatever way and whatever need in every situation that I have that he can touch me and feed me and give me what I need in order to be alive in my circumstances <laughs> the Bible says he planted them. <clears throat> These trees owed their planting to the Lord. God overseen these trees. <clears throat> they were not dependent upon man necessarily for their watering, but they trusted in God, in the Lord. They were not protected. Many of them wasn't by some mortal man. But God overseen the trees. What's that got to do with me, you say? I tell you what it's got to do with you, everything. <clears throat> because God plants you. Amen. And if he plants us, take root. Amen. Amen. If he takes plants us, <coughs> take root. Because he will water us with his presence yes. of his sweet Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Even in a dry land, the waters from the great God of heaven can flow That's right. into the driest of the deserts. Yes. Amen. Even the Spirit of God can lead us through the deepest, darkest valleys that we may ever face. Right. Even the power and the anointing of God can help us to climb any mountain that we need to climb. He's able to speak to those whatever and be able to move in our lives. In verse 13, <coughs> Paul wrote and said, I can do all things. Amen. Amen. Now this doesn't mean that you and I can create worlds and stop the sun from shining and 
stop the world on its axis to stop it completely but the point what Paul is trying to get is that God will give us the power to do what we need to do in order to be victorious in our walk with him I can do all things through Christ I can do all things through Christ Amen. God will give us the grace and the strength to overcome every situation. Whatever task he may ask of us, we can be sure that he will supply all that is required for us to do it. What Paul's saying is that if God leads me to it, he'll lead me through it. Amen. If he takes me to it, he'll lead me through it. Amen. If we face a struggle, God will give us what we need Amen. that I can overcome. Yes. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Whatever task he asks of us, he will certainly give us the strength and the wisdom to do it. It is only in Christ and only in that spiritual union that we have with him that we possess this strength. You're out there on your own? You think you don't need God? You ain't going to get that strength. I'm not a motivational speaker, but you can listen to motivational speakers all day. But you know what? They don't get you nowhere. They might get you hyped up in your mind. But I can tell you one thing. God can give us that strength we need Amen. if we'll trust in Him and keep that union with Him. Amen. The problem is that people don't keep the union with Him. Right. Right. Amen, Brother Mark. Preach on. I'm going to. Yeah, you did good, Amen. I'll preach. I'll, I'll amen me. Amen. When we, <coughs> if we want to possess this strength that Christ has, let me tell you, I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how much faith you've got. You may say, Brother Mark, I've been saved all my life, and buddy, I've knocked them down one right after the other. Maybe you have. But I tell you what, I've seen people also get knocked down. Oh. And I've been one of them that's been knocked down a time or two down through the years. I'm not that prideful that I'm not going to say that I'm too blessed to be stressed. Oh. Amen. You've heard me tell about that boy that told me that I'm too blessed to be stressed. Well, I ain't got that close to God yet, but I'm working on it. Amen. But you know what tonight? I'm glad to know that if I stay with Christ, amen. He wrote in John 15. He said, I'm the vine uh, uh, and you're the branches. Uh, he said, if you stay in me uh, and abide in me, uh, he said that I'll give you what you have need of. I'll nourish you in the times of your hunger. I'll water you in the times of your thirst. I'll strengthen you in the times of your weakness. I'll give you peace in times of your turmoil. Amen. But the problem is, is that we want to come to church. Amen. And just shout for a service and go back out in the world and cut ourselves off from God. Amen. And think that we don't need him outside of church. I got enough to do me Sunday morning. Thank God for Sunday morning. Thank God for Wednesday night. But I'm here to tell you, I got Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday that I've got to deal with. And I'm here to tell you, I want to stay plugged in. Amen. Hallelujah. So if we're going <coughs> to... We're going to keep that strength. We've got to stay. Amen. We've got to let him possess us. It is only in Christ and that spiritual union with him that we possess this strength. Without him, we can do nothing. But through Christ, I can, I can do all things. Amen. His strength is made perfect. In my weakness. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. Paul wrote also in 2 Corinthians 6 and 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. 
in this spiritual temple, the living God makes his chosen vessels his dwelling place. I don't know about you, but I like that thought that God lives within me. Yes. God lives in me. Amen. I'm ashamed sometimes because of the way I act. Now, some of you, I know y'all don't do that, but, you know, I have bad thoughts every now and then when somebody makes me mad or whatever, but uh, I try to keep them to myself. I don't always succeed in that, but uh, we try our best. I hope I ain't the only one. Come on. Amen. We'll pray for you. Pray for me. <laughs> Amen. I need it. The church, I'm going to tell you, whatever our need is, whatever we face, I can do all things. Yeah. Through Christ, who strengtheneth me. Amen. He walks with us, but he don't just dwell with us. He dwells in us. Yes. And that excites my soul tonight. That excites me that he dwells within this old boy. This old imperfect, amen, once good for nothing, probably ain't worth a whole lot right now. Amen. But you know what? He saw something in me. Yes. Amen. 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 He saw something in you. Yeah, you I said you was a bad person. Absolutely not. But you needed him just like I did. Amen. 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 You needed him just like I did. Amen. I was headed down a bad road. So a lot of you know my story. Some of you don't know. Some of you won't know. But you know what? He looked up on me over 39 years ago. It wasn't anything I'd done. Not me, huh? But he said, boy, you don't have to live like this. Amen. You don't have to live that way. I can change your life. I can change it that quick. Amen. And I tell you what he did. And he did that for all of us, did he not? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. We are his dwelling place. And let me tell you. I asked you a little bit ago. Is, is, don't we think he's all powerful? We all about every hand went up. Don't we think he can do all things with us? Yeah. Would he want? Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know what? He will make himself known. Unto us. And he reveals himself. In our hearts. We may find ourselves at times. Weak. And helpless. But can we still find the presence of the Almighty in our lives? Yes. He'll never forsake us. He'll never leave us. Amen. Wherever you're at, He will not only be with you in those good times, but He'll be with you in all times. Right. Amen. 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 You can't find too many friends like that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My own daddy disowned me. He even had the sheriff to call. You've heard me tell him. I said, you tell Mr. Tolson, I don't want to be bothered with him and I don't want to be harassed with him. I didn't think I was harassing him. I just wanted to meet him. Never met him. But I saw that sheriff that night. I said, let me tell you something. You tell Mr. Bob Tolson, if he don't want nothing to do with me, he won't, he'll never hear from me again. He never did. He's dead, gone on now. Hope he made everything right with the Lord. I don't have no bitterness toward him. I ain't saying what I'm saying out of bitterness toward him. Absolutely not. But friends will leave you and, and family will forsake you sometimes. But I serve a God that in him I can do all things. Amen. 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 In him I can do all things. I didn't say that for you to feel sorry for me because I don't feel sorry for me. I've been moved past all that. But I'm here to tell you what, folks, sometimes I don't know if we really understand, and I'll put my name at the top of the list. Man, I thank God, I, I, Lord, there's so much about you I don't understand. There's so much, and I've learned a few things along the way. But, that man, there's so much about him. But I found him to be faithful when nobody else will be faithful. When you got nobody anywhere else to go, amen. When you can't find the number on your phone to call for, for a little bit of consol consolation to help you. All I got to do is call upon him. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's all you can do. Amen. I can do all things. Say that with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. One more time. I can 
do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Do you believe that tonight? If you do, give him a big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will say Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God tonight for every battle that's been won. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank God tonight. I've lost a few, but you know when I look back upon them battles that I've lost, I found out that I didn't do it God's way. But I've also looked back and thought, Lord, I've said to how he's worked. And if I will trust him and I will believe in him and I will allow him to work in my life and do, do it the way he wants to do it. How many knows God's way is the best? way. But when I learned to do that, amen, uh, hallelujah, when Paul said, I've learned to, that whatever state I'm in, uh, to be content in God. In other words, uh, I'm not going to lay my head down at night, amen, with uh, my mind full of fear, amen, people, some people count sheep, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk to the shepherd, uh, amen, uh, I'm here to tell you tonight, church, uh, be content wherever you're at. Pray about situations. Amen. Take them before the Lord. Cast your cares upon the Lord. But I'm here to tell you, I just thought about this week. Don't die in your circumstances. Amen. 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 That may not hit nobody. But that hit me this week. I've known people that have died spiritually in their circumstances. Amen. I've known preachers that have died in their circumstances and quit preaching. I know Sunday school teachers that died in their circumstances and quit teaching. I know people, good people, that I really truly believe love God. But do you know that the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy your faith and your trust in God and my faith and my trust in God? But I'm here to tell you tonight, amen, trust in God wherever you're at and wherever he leads you. Because he didn't let you down. He didn't fail us. Huh? I said he didn't fail us. Amen. But he'll give us the strength. I want just for just a very few more minutes. I won't tarry long much longer. But I want to consider the extent of that one who completely puts their trust in the Lord. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That one that puts their trust completely in the Lord, they're able to withstand every trial. Every trial. They also are brave. They will be brave and all of the suffering that they go through. That one that completely puts their trust in the Lord, the Lord will give them the power to overcome every temptation that comes in their way. And that also, it will cause them to do the work that is set before them. What is the source of the Christian strength. Paul said, we read there, I can do all things. Not maybe, not we hope so, not we're going to try. But Paul said, I can. I can. Can you tonight? I can. I, I'm not up here telling you something spiritual. Not because of Mark's wisdom can I do this. If I trusted Mark's wisdom to preach, buddy, I'd resign tonight. I'd resign preaching and I'd resign teaching if I trusted me. And I'm not saying anything to be super spiritual. That is not it. But I can do what I need to do. Not because I'm a member of this church and I'm honored to be a member of this church and to be part of this church. I am. I truly say that sincerely. But you know why I can do things? I can do it through Christ. Amen. Amen. I can do them through Christ. I can do them. Amen. When my mama passed, it hurt to watch her suffer like she did. 
I was holding her hand, the night she passed. And I seen, I was the last one she looked at because I was within two feet of her face. And I thought, Lord, I can't do this. He said, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And Jackie's my witness. She was there with us. And our pastor at the time was there. I held her by her hand. And she left here. One of the hardest things I ever had to do. But there was a presence of God come in that room, in that hospital room. That I thought we was going to break out in a shout. That's what God will do for you. Amen. See, I couldn't do it myself. I couldn't do it. But you know what? I can through Christ. Amen. Whatever you're facing tonight, you can. Not in your wisdom. Not even in the power of this church. And this is a praying church. But Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me and strengtheneth. What is the source of the Christian's strength? The one who loves the Lord and walks in his ways is a strong soul. God will make you strong. Yes. God will not merely protect you with the armor that is around you. But he will uphold you with his right hand. With his right hand. He will protect and he will uphold. See, God doesn't sometimes hide us from our storms. You hear me? He doesn't always hide us from storms. You can watch TV and they talk about hurricanes and stuff and they'll tell you take shelter. And you know what? When hurricanes, those spiritual hurricanes come and those spiritual storms come in my life, I'm going to take shelter. Yeah. But God doesn't always protect us from them in the sense of not allowing us to go through them. Can I tell you, sometimes you're going to have to face a fiery furnace. Sometimes you're going to have to face a lion's den. But the Christian strength is that we found in Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. So if you're facing something or you get ready to face something, the next time, trust God. Amen. And I don't want to sound too preachy, but I'm going to tell you something, folks. We ain't got nowhere else to go. I mean, we can call Sister Julie, and I'll tell you what, I thank God for our sister for uh, sending out prayer requests. I thank God for you folks praying for us. You, we've seen God move in many lives, of your family's lives, my family's lives, our family's lives. Thank God for that. But I'm not talking about that, but truly all we have, the only one that we can really go to is God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. We are made strong in the Lord. Christians, they're weak in themselves. Amen. Paul said, I can do all things. And I'm going to close with this thought. All things. Not some things. Not a few things. But I can do all things. All the troubles I face, I can overcome them. All the temptations that come into my life, I can overcome them. Life brings us changing circumstances, does it not? <coughs> but life must be born with contentment. Amen. Jesus gives us strength for endurance. The call for strength comes in various ways. For we wrestle with our fleshly desires. And we fight the temptations of the sinful lust sometimes. And we fight against the failures of the heart when affliction seems to try 
and overpower us. Final plan. Isaiah 40 and 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. What a promise. Would you stand tonight as they come to the music? Uh, they're coming. Say that verse 13 with me if you would. I